G'day folks and uh, welcome to Gourmet Shed. What we're looking at this week is uh, tarpaulins for your wagons. Now I've uh, noticed myself over the years, it's really only sort of come to prominence in my mind just recently, but uh, when you see a lot of wagons on modern railways they don't actually have tarpaulins on them. Whereas uh, the real thing in years gone by uh, had tarpaulins used uh, quite extensively. Um, to cover loads etc and um, so the other day I got this little wagon which was a pretty ordinary looking little thing and um, I've uh, managed to make this uh, tarpaulin for it and uh, it's all done at home with uh, readily available um, supplies and it's even got uh, ropes on it as well to sort of uh, improve the look of it. There's there's ropes uh, coming down at an angle here. There's some dropping down here as well. Now, on the real thing, they would probably be tied off on the side of the wagon here, but I've actually taken them down to the chassis and underneath. And uh, to secure them, I've used uh, blue tack. Even though this stuff is white, you can see it here. I put a blob of uh, we'll call it blue tack. I put a blob of uh, blue tack under the wagon, then pulled the uh, the cords through and pressed them into it. And when I had them all set in there, I put another blob of blue tack over it. So what's happened with this wagon, folks, is uh, everything is reversible. If, if the tarp gets damaged or whatever, or you just don't like it anymore, or you want to make another one, it's quite a simple matter to remove the blue tack, just lift it off, that's it, done back to where you were, back to square one. So we're going to have a look at uh, how this was made today and also there are other options for doing this. Uh, some people use uh, facial tissues, some people use uh, toilet paper, <laughs> um, new toilet paper, uh, some people use tea bags and for the larger scales uh, like O-Gage some people use baby wipes they uh, take them out of the packet and dry them out and uh, that material is actually quite strong so it would make a good uh, tarp in the bigger scales so um, yeah we'll, we'll have a look at uh, this initial method and uh, then we might have a look at some of the other stuff as well okay here we go okay folks this is the victim that's uh, gonna get a tarp on it so the first thing we need to do is accurately measure the the top the outside edges of the top from the length here which in this case is 66 millimeters and the width is 32 okay 66 by 32 now this one here folks is uh, a slightly different size so it's not a it's not a case of one size fits all uh, the other thing we need to do, I forgot to mention before, was actually measure how far down the uh, side of the wagon we want to come. And uh, I think probably about 12 millimetres would be plenty on this one. So we'll make it 12 millimetres. So 66 by 32 by 12 millimetres. Okay folks, we've got our measurements and uh, we're going to now get onto the computer and uh, create a tarp on a piece of A4 paper um, to suit this little wagon. So let's get into it. Right now to uh, create the uh, tarp folks we have to uh, go into a drawing program and I use the open office drawing program 
I've used this on other uh, videos, so some of you will be familiar with that. Now we need to draw a couple of rectangles. So the first one we'll draw is the one that's the actual size of the wagon. And uh, so I've just marked out a rectangle roughly here. Now to get its correct size, I go into position and size and just set the width here. Just set that to uh, 32 millimeters and the height which is actually the length is uh, 66 hit enter and there we have it I'll just make that slightly bigger so we can see what's going on now that's one done now remember I said uh, we were going to drop the tarp about 12 millimeters down each side of the wagon uh, so what we'll have to do is create now a larger rectangle to overlay this one uh, with you know by adding 12 millimeters to each side so the width will be 24 millimeters wider and the length will be 24 millimeters longer so we create another rectangle bigger than that one and do the same thing go into position and size and then we have to set the new width which will be um, 32 and 24 is 56 millimeters and the height or length uh, will be 66 plus uh, 24 which gives us 90 millimeters Hit enter there now what we need to do is uh, overlay these two and then center up the, uh, the smaller one and uh, we'll work from that so what we'll do is drag this one over and that's going to slip behind so we'll also arrange that to come to the front so we can see what's going on so we'll just put that there in the middle now uh, we'll go up to edit and we will select all then I right click and this is where we do the alignment folks first of all we'll do the uh, horizontal so we'll center it there and now we will do the vertical alignment and we'll center it there so now the smaller rectangle is perfectly centered uh, in in the larger rectangle and uh, now we can move on to the next step right the next step folks is uh, I like to add in some uh, little guidelines for um, folding so we'll add one here I'll just check that um, that's dead level, uh, which it is. It's showing zero degrees, so that's fine. And uh, I'll copy that, and we'll paste, and we'll do another one, and we'll bring that down to there. That's fine. Uh, now. We'll do some for the corners, so we'll get some more lines in here. I like to use these because they give me a, a guide when folding. So we'll just add four of those in. And um, we'll have to sort the colour out too, folks, because uh, I mean, you could have a blue tarp if you wanted to, but it's up to you what colour you have. But uh, I'll be making a, a Great Western version, so it won't be blue. Let's just get those done. Okay. Right, now while we're at it, folks, we might as well uh, select everything there. And what I like to do is group everything. This means it locks it all together as one one item so when you go to move it around it all moves together uh, that sort of uh, keeps it all locked in there and uh, if we need to move it about or whatever it's no big deal now uh, the color is showing as blue classic uh, I like to use somewhere around about gray 7 so um, we'll see if we can uh, get that organized doesn't seem to be working at the moment there we go. 
Right now, there's there's our base color for the for the tarp, and we've got our fold lines in there. So uh, now we need to move on to the next stage and get some lettering on there. Okay, folks, uh, the lettering. Now, um, click on the text button, and uh, the text I like to use is uh, Arial Black, and size is 14. And at the moment, we won't play around with the color, but uh, and we'll just make it a G. With a couple of spaces, I think. GW. And we'll make the color white. Now, obviously, we need to center that. So we'll just move that somewhere near the middle. And up a bit, I think. Okay, that's fine. And um, now yeah, we need some numbers. Uh, the numbers I used before was five nine eight eight six. So we can do that again. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we'll put some numbers in this time. So we'll use the text again. And yeah, we'll just zoom this up a bit. As oops, I'll just get out of there. And we'll zoom this up a bit so we can see what we're doing. Just move that up and make it a bit bigger. Right. Back to the text. And we will use, uh, how do you say this? It's Sergo. Here we are. Uh, Sergo UI semi bold. We're looking for that one. And the size will make 14. And the numbers are five nine eight eight six five nine eight eight six, and we'll make those white. And we'll move them up near the uh, near the other one. That'll do. Or do they look too big? Maybe we'll make them smaller. Make them, let's say, 12. Yeah, that's better. That'll do. And put them about there. That's fine. Okay, so we now need to uh, copy that and uh, move it all around uh, to the other sides of the tarp. So I'll get on and do that. The easiest way I've found to do this, folks, is I've just copied these two. Uh, it's the text, the uh, letters and the numbers and then um, I've uh, selected all again and I've grouped the text in with the uh, the tarp. Uh, now if I click on and select the, the whole lot there um, what I do is just um, rotate the whole lot and uh, so we go to position and size and rotation and We'll make it uh, 90 degrees. It's just easier to drop the text on when it's around the right way. So there we are. It's, it's rotated it. So now we paste. There's our text coming up again. And it's exactly the same as the other text. And we'll put it somewhere near the middle there. Out there. That's fine. Now, again, I'll... Select all. It didn't work. Select all. Group. So now the whole lot's grouped together. And we'll rotate it again uh, to 180 degrees. Which puts it up that way. And now. We'll paste and we'll bring that text down here somewhere near the middle. Same process again, folks. Select all, group, 
and we'll rotate it to the next one is 270 degrees. Which gives us the bottom paste and we'll move the text up somewhere near the middle. There we are, that'll do fine. And just to lock it all together, we'll group it all once more. Now the whole lot can move as one, so we prove that by just uh, using the arrows, the arrow keys, it moves around, the whole lot stays together. So that's it folks, it's uh, what remains now is for this um, tarp to be printed out. Right folks, it's, uh, it's printed off now, here we have it, and uh, it's just a matter of uh, cutting it out, and then we'll get to work on it and uh, rough it up a bit, and uh, make it look more like a tarp instead of something printed on a piece of paper. Okay, so here we go. Okay folks, it's, uh, it's cut out, now the next thing I do is fold along those fold lines that I uh, marked on the paper and uh, put quite a, a good crease in them I, I run my nail along there to make quite a sharp fold and I'll, I'll do this all around the tarp and uh, try and do it as accurately as you can get, the, get it right on the line if you can because this is the bit that is critical to fit over the wagon. So we just keep going with this for a while and then we'll get to the next stage. Now once I've folded the sides I sort of flatten it out a bit more again. And remember those little angled lines I put in? Well now I fold along those and try and get them as again as accurate as you can. difficult to do this and make sure that I'm showing you correctly on the camera but give it a bit of a run between your nail and, the, and your finger and start doing the, the, these corners as well and then you'll finish up with something that looks looks like that okay we're getting there now the next thing I do is, uh, I mean, it's, it's looking a bit too pristine, folks, isn't it? So, what do you reckon? Maybe we should just, uh, maybe we should just get rid of it. <laughs> we should just uh, fold it up, squash it up into a tiny little ball. Yeah, you reckon? No, no, there's a reason for that as well. Uh, what we need to do is distress this and uh, make it look like it's been around for a long time and uh, that's part of the reason why I've done that. Now I've opened it out again and uh, what I'll do now is you can see that it's, it's looking a bit rough and ready there now folks. Looks like it was folded up and thrown in the corner willy-nilly and not really taken care of so now I sort of fold it over on itself and then just work it between my fingers and roll it all the way along its length to add even more distress to it and then turn it the other way and roll it that way as well. Now the other thing I do with it is actually hold both ends and um, pull it backwards and forwards over the edge of a table. Uh, actually I think I've put a tear in this one. But that doesn't matter. We can sort that out. So we're starting to get to this uh, rather distressed look, how a tarp should look. Now before we go too much further folks we need to um, seal this little tarp. So I just use some pins and uh, stick it in there somewhere and stick it on a bit of polystyrene and I've got some um, matte sealer spray 
that I use for this sort of job. And uh, we'll get that sorted out. So we'll just give that a good go with the spray. Should do. Now, while that's drying, folks, and uh, it shouldn't take too long, it's uh, we've just had our um, hottest September day on record here in Sydney. Uh, it was it got up to uh, I think 37. Uh, it's quarter past seven in the evening now, and it's still 32 degrees, so it won't take long to dry. But anyway, uh, that's that's what we're using at the moment, A4 paper, uh, to uh, achieve this tarp that we're making. Uh, now, as I said, you can also use face, face uh, tissues, facial tissues, um, but to use them, what you need to do is give them a spray, and I did that with a piece the other day, that's just sprayed brown, but see how you can see through it, um, but when it's on a wagon it looks alright actually, but that, that was just sprayed with um, some brown pressure pack spray paint. I mean, you could get greys or whatever. And uh, a method that is used with the, the tissue is one where um, you, uh, say, put a load in a wagon. Uh, you, you know, a, a load that sticks up a little bit, we'll say, whatever. Uh, you then completely wrap your wagon in cling wrap. Uh, so that the, wag the wagon's completely protected, uh, and don't wrap it too tight, so you can you can manipulate around the load you're using. Then you put a tissue over the the cling wrap, completely over the wagon, and you put a rubber band around the bottom of the wagon and over the tissue to hold it in place. Uh, the next, and then you uh, manipulate the tissue around the load, and put some wrinkles in it, and all that sort of thing. To Get it looking the way you want it to look. Uh, then you uh, get some diluted PVA, 50-50 water and PVA. Spray it all over the, uh, the tissue and that effectively seals it, uh, turns it into a bit of plastic if you like. Then um, once it's dry, you hit it with the spray can to the, the colour you want. Remembering it's all still the wagon's still sealed up in the cling wrap. Everything's just as I said spray paint it and uh, Get it the color you want uh, Then you remove the uh, rubber band which was set down low on the wagon Remember you remove the, the rubber band and you're going to have this white strip where the rubber band was uh, then you um, gently undo the uh, the cling wrap from underneath and, and ease the thing off off the wagon and then just peel out the cling wrap. Then you get a pair of scissors and trim off the tarp above the white line where the rubber band was and you've got this uh, lift on lift off tarp. That's one method. Um, I suppose you could add um, uh, cotton ropes to that. Uh, the same would apply with uh, toilet paper. Same method because toilet paper and tissue paper there's not much difference between them uh, but they both break down in water. And uh, one other thing it's worth a, a real good look at is this is uh, a tea bag that's been um, emptied of its, uh, it's been used, <laughs> emptied out, the tea leaves out and the bag's been opened. It was uh, originally a rectangular bag. Uh, the round ones are going to be no good because they're the wrong shape. But open it out and this stuff is pretty strong. I know you can see through it but you could, you could spray paint that. Um, and um, if I get the wagon, uh, this little wagon that we're working on, it fits over that easy. Now you could have a bit of a load sticking up in that and you could use the method that I mentioned about the uh, tissue, you know, where you um, hit it with the diluted PVA and, and then paint it, etc, etc. So I, th I think a tea bag is probably not a bad way to go but the disadvantage with the tissues the toilet paper the tea bag is that you don't get any uh, letters or numbers printed onto the uh, onto the tarp 
So if you if you went down that road and you did want letters or numbers, you'd have to make up yourself a little template uh, so you could spray letters onto the tarp or numbers or whatever. Uh, that'd be a bit tricky. I don't know whether you can purchase anything from a news agent that would be small enough to allow you to uh, to do that. Uh, you know, quite often they have uh, letters and number templates that you can use for projects and all that sort of thing. But anyway, um, yeah, so that, they're the other ways around it. And as I mentioned uh, at the beginning as well, for the bigger gauges, uh, some people are using uh, baby wipes. You pull it out, let it dry out, uh, and then, uh, you know, obviously paint it or whatever you want to do, spray paint it, and uh, yeah, and work on it. So we're just waiting for this um, this tarp to dry. So uh, we'll wait till that's done, and uh, and then we'll get back into it. Okay, folks. Uh, while the tarp is drying, I've cut four lengths of uh, brown cotton, and they're going to go on the corners of the of the tarp. And to fit those on, what we're going to do is just put some super glue on the end of the cotton. And uh, I usually squeeze the super glue until I can see it just come up to the end of the nozzle. Then I push the cotton into the end of the nozzle just to get a little bit on the on the cotton. And then we bring it over to the tarp and lay it on so it just comes out at the corner. On about the same line as the fold that I put in earlier. So we've just got to hold that there until it sets. Looks like that one's taken on. And uh, we'll do another one. So again, we just squeeze the tube so gently until you just see the super glue at the end. And then push the cotton into the tube so it gets a bit wet. And then lay it on the corner at a diagonal and just let it dry. It doesn't take long to, to go off folks so I'll get on and I'll do the rest of those. Alright folks they're all stuck on. Now we get to the stage here where we've got to put it on to the wagon. Now I use the fold lines to sort of guide me as to where it is. You can feel it as you go and you want it to fit pretty much exactly over the edges of the wagon. Now that's the position that's in there is very good. So that's good. We're, we're off ready to run now. So uh, Now what I do is um, I've got some Uhu stick and I start with the corners and I fold the corner around corner like so and then but before I do that, I put a bit of uhu on inside the flap there. And then when I push it around, I hold it against the tarp, and that sticks it to itself. So all will become clear as we go along. So I've got my uhu ready. And I don't want to lose the position I've got on the wagon there. So I've got to hold it on the wagon bring the Yoohoo up under the flap and push the flap onto the Yoohoo. Get some on there, don't worry if you get too much you can always wipe it off. And then push the flap around and stick it onto itself. I know you probably can't see that very well but that's taken now enough anyway. Like that. That's number one. So we do the rest of them uh, we'll do the other side of this one first so that we get um, an even pull on both ends. So I'll just get some Uhu. It's all moving around now, but I'm trying to keep it in a position where you can see it. I'll put some Uhu on just on the end and push it around. Of course the Yoohoo is not getting on the wagon it's just on the tarp. So I'll hold those together for a second and 
now we'll go to the other end and I'm sort of holding the tarp down over the wagon as I do this you need about 15 fingers to do it but a bit of oohoo on the end I suppose you could use PVA but uh, this seems to work okay and just one to go now So fold that down and notice our our ropes are in the, the middle of the fold there. Bit of oohoo on there and just fold that around neatly. Hold the two together now. I'll probably hold the four of them here until this sets a bit better. My fingers are sticky so it's not, it's not helpful. But anyway, we're getting there. On top of that, when the um, when the ropes are connected, they'll be pulling against that corner as well. So we'll just let that sit and let it go off for a bit. Now folks, I've just been uh, having a look at the wagon, working out which way I'm going to put the ropes through. And I'd, I'd say I'm going to go through this little section just here, and that'll feed to the underneath of the wagon. And I can put some um, blue tack on there, and then just bring the, the ropes down to connect onto that. Uh, that should be fairly easy, I think. So, um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have a look at that. And... Uh, get it happening. In the meantime we can just have a look at uh, how it's turning out here. Um, that's a tear there and that's no big deal because you just get cut out a little piece of the same sort of uh, material if you've printed out a couple of these. I mean I wouldn't just use one sheet of paper to print out one. Uh, I'd print out maybe four or six of these. Just get a little little patch and glue it over it because tarps have patches in them and uh, that would look quite effective actually and uh, yeah you could even if you wanted to uh, whack another couple of patches on the top or whatever uh, and we've got to weather this yet as well uh, unless you just like it like that it's not bad actually um, uh, I think anyway and uh, yeah you can you can add some dirt and grime to it I just use um, pastels I just scrape some pastel across the top that's what I've been using for weathering for a while so yeah, we'll um, I have to get this uh, these ropes sorted out. You can't actually run it like that with bits of rope hanging off. So we'll get that sorted out, and uh, then we'll be pretty well finished, I think, except for a bit of weathering. Uh, so uh, yeah, all right, let's get organised. Right, here's my uh, blue tack. It's actually Sally's Easy Tack, and uh, I'll just get a, a little bit of that out, and we'll get it onto the uh, onto the wagon. I like to work it between my fingers a bit. Um, it sort of warms it up and makes it more pliable. I mean, it's only a little ball here at the moment, but uh, yeah, it sort of makes it a bit more sticky and gooey. Uh, a bit easier to work with, if you like, instead of just ripping it straight out of the packet and trying to shove it on. So I've got this little ball, and I'll use probably half the ball uh, as the base to stick the, uh, the cotton into. So I'll just tear a bit off and uh, and we'll get that we'll get that stuck under the wagon in a second we we'll just, we'll just push it down so that it spreads out a bit but also pushes into the, the base there a bit and has a bit of contact going on now we've got to thread the uh, cotton through now folks I've got some of these uh, flat uh, tweezers, flat end tweezers, I don't know what you call them, but um, they're good for pulling the cotton through, but they're, they're even better for sort of pushing it down, when you've got hold of it, you can push it down into the blue tack, so uh, if you can get hold of something like these, they're good, and uh, I'm only pulling it through at the moment because I've got to cut it off, and uh, I'll just cut it so that it fits well within the wagon 
and goes past the blue tack and now I've got to find the end of it again and, and just stick it down right got it and I'll just push it with the end of the uh, tweezers into the blue tack the white blue tack okay I'll do another one same side I'll go through the same hole that I'll put that one through and uh, it's like threading a needle and once again cut it to um, the point where it just goes past the blue tack but it stays inside the wagon you don't want bits of uh, cotton hanging out everywhere grab hold of it with the tweezers pull it tight and actually you might even I'm going to use the uh, little stick I've got here to hold it in place while I put some pressure on it okay put some pressure on it bed it into the blue tack and there we're right to do the other side so I'll get that done and then we'll come back to you right I've got them all through folks so I'll just put the other bit of blue tack on top this is just to hold it all together and uh, I'll push it down with the end of my stick and that just really seals the deal if you like I don't think that'll be visible from the side I mean you'd have to be right down at track level I think to even have a chance of seeing it but I suppose if you wanted to you could always put some black paint over it so right that's just about done it I think looks a bit ordinary doesn't it but you know when you when you look at the wagon uh, that's what it looks like get a little bit closer so now we can see we've got our, our rope coming down here another one over this side and around the other side it's the same got a rope coming down here and a rope coming down there and uh, they appear to have been sewn into the uh, the, the tarp itself uh, I think most tarps would have rings in them, but you know, there are limits to what we can do. <laughs> limits to what I can do, anyway. Put it that way. You guys might come up with a, a better system than this. But uh, what we've finished up with is a little wagon with a tarp on. And I mean, admittedly, uh, it's not showing any load in there. So I guess that's the fault with this method. Uh, to, to do one with the load, I've, I still have to experiment with that yet. I would have to make the tarp dimensions bigger because if you've got something rising up in there uh, you'd have to make the tarp bigger to sort of cope with it but you know that's that's something that can be done I mean the thing is to prove that this can be done in the first place okay extreme close-up time folks and we'll just uh, turn it around give you another look Keep my hand here because it makes the light a bit better for the uh, viewing here and the top. Now, the question is to weather or not to weather? Or weather to weather? What's that you say? Weather? Okay, alright, well, we'll give it a go. Okay, folks, as I said, I just use uh, pastels for, uh, for weathering, and um, what we might do is put a bit of black on there. And uh, all I do is I just get the, uh, the pastel and a knife and I just scrape the side of the pastel and it puts a bit of powder on there uh, on top of the wagon. And I'll just give it a bit of a wipe with my finger, spread it around a bit. And uh, blow the excess off. might even get a little brush I think uh, which might uh, 
help the situation a bit. And we'll just give it a brush there. Now, what else? We've got a bit of brown here. A little bit of brown. And we'll just wipe that again. Brush a bit off. Now, we're not getting the sides very well there, so we'll just turn it over. And we might put a bit of brown on the side, I think. And we'll just uh, give that a bit of a wipe. And we'll do the same on each side. So I'll get on with that and we'll uh, come back and see what it looks like. Well there we are folks, I think that'll, more, that'll do. A uh, bit of grime on the end. That side as well. It's not quite as dirty, but you know, that's all right. It, it certainly looks like it's been around for a while. So there we are. Job done. Well, there we are, folks. That's uh, job done on that one. And uh, I don't know. I thought it came up pretty well. Um, as I say, uh, if you wanted to use the A4 paper with a load in the wagon, uh, well, you would have to make the uh, dimensions quite a bit bigger and probably do some manipulation and some extra manipulation on the paper. I'm yet to try that myself but uh, when I do I'll let you know how it goes. Anyway, that's all for now. <laughs> Cheers. Gormo.